Dietations viewers, my name is Game Dame, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Right now, we're trying to buy a gala drink. Maybe, maybe not. I think I'm okay. No, uh, maybe some other time. Suit yourself, sailor. Many saunters, Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watched the game over another beer. The game has gotten close to terms of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points from the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. <laughs> Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey, and watching the game as well. I don't like this guy. He creeps me the hell out. Enjoying the game, but so does my guy. <laughs> like, my guy's pretty fucking weird. I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based on our win-loss record, I have to say my team is superior. Boom, baby! Smack daddy ho! That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. Ooh. The conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiz whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Ooh, Robert, you mysterious fucking werewolf looking dude. Thanks, I'm huge. <laughs> huge jacked man. <laughs> he must be new here. Mary already hit on you. Yeah, Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim and Kim that runs this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? I love shots. Ooh, shots fired. I don't like it. <laughs> Bada bing. I like shots. Thank you. Wow, he actually has a nice, genuine face on, this werewolf-looking motherfucker. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Here's to your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, huge. This guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Let's go, huge. Make some fucking friends. Uh, Coleman is... Hand tattoo. I like your tattoo. What does it mean? It is a reminder. I wait for him to elaborate, but it seems like he's done talking. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? My daughter. Not like forever. She was for. Uh, she was having a sleepover with her friends. Family type, huh? Single dad. Mmm. -hmm. He gets up. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha, I guess so. I mean, who doesn't like that fucking face? <laughs> I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You headed my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking the same direction. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. I mean, come on. Look at this dude's fucking face. My dude looks creepy as hell. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, huge. So are we doing this or what? What? You know, do you want to come inside or not? Ooh! <laughs> he is just straight to the point. That baby boy is just going for it. A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Oh, no, no. 
God, don't lay, don't do it. No, 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 no. Uh, no, thank you. I want a meaningful relationship. And you're not the type, Mr. Werewolf, dude. No, thanks. Uh, I'd better call and, like, catch you around. Sure. We're not doing this, my man. I'm going to play hard to get. <laughs> I head home, head buzzing with whiskey. What do you mean by, are we going to do this or not? I plop down on the couch, and I'm asleep before I even get the chance to take my shoes off. Don't eat too close to your bedtime is the number dad tip. I wake up a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine, early birds. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Smiley face. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. No, let's go to the gym. Hey, my man. I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and, hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head on out. The neighborhood is quiet, and the ser serene this early... I can't even breathe. This early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out in front, stretching, of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. Oh, oh hey there, Craig. How you doing, baby boy? Hey, bro, good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped as he is. Maybe I should have some coffee before I left. You ready to kick some butt? Can I touch yours first? Help! <laughs> I get the feeling this is going to be less of me kicking butt and more of the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Dude, bro, that means a lot. Ooh, girl! Thank you for that cute-ass smile. <laughs> we head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. And it seems like Craig's is friends with all of them. He high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. Hey, that's what I do. <laughs> they look like they could and would steal my lunch money if to spend on protein shakes. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be walking. So, I know we are on treadmills. Nice. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Very good. What is all this other stuff? That's what I tell myself all the time when I'm at the fucking gym. I mean, come on, like, I don't, I don't go to the gym. I should start and start working out and stuff, but damn, I hate working out. It's such a chore. <laughs> Craig laughs. Hey. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a spe specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes a muscle I didn't know existed on a machine. I think I once used to process grain into flour. <laughs> What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Using a medieval torture device. That's There's a tiny man in there, right? And he did something that the court found unfavorable. And now the muscular dude is doing out of justice in the form of pain. What? Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. Shit. Uh, how long have you been doing this buff thing? Couple years. And what do you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? I don't know, being sexy. Oh. oh, I coach my twin softball team. He has twins. I'm a twin. Perfect. It's meant to be. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Um, I check out my hot bot. I love learning. I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge, soaking up all the intellectual content. You know, history, the paranormal, wilderness, survival, uh, aliens, mostly those things. So you watch the History Channel too, huh? Yes. <laughs> we're jogging now. Oh good, we're jogging now. 
I took over. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broke his head. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel the life force draining through every orifice of my body. Sounds like me at the gym. Oh. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? Because that's totally sounding to be sexual the way I do it. Huff. No, I don't like this story. <laughs> Oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we were at that party and you vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create a distraction. So of course I do a sick cake stand and get everyone cheering. Ooh, cake stand, bro. And then I huff, <sighs> try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic. So you run up to me post keg stand with a dying dirty fish in your hands that you have scooped off the ground off of the ground and you're yelling at me we have to leave hey. so we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth to mouth res <laughs> really? resuscitation and we get him home and get him into the bowl of water but the prognosis was grim prognosis the next day he's alive and well Dude. they never did catch the great fish thieves of the grand ridge you the great fish thieves, wow. And they never ugh, will. <laughs> Poor guy. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me and then looks over me over for injuries. Touch me more. I'm fantastic. <laughs> That's exactly something I would say. I managed to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. Oh, man. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. Nice. You sure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, here, I brought you this. Greg hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stirred it with what must be apparent distaste. Mm. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. I love protein shakes. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. Take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Mm -hmm. And good for you, my man. It's my special recipe. Ooh, special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Hey. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. <laughs> no pun intended, bro. Hey, good one. Well, I'm going to put on ice, some ice on this. Everything. I'll see you around. Yeah, I'll see you around, Craig. I leave the gym feeling shamed. Craig used an order delivery. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm. Now he can run circles around me, literally. Man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. Dad bods are hot. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. You might be hearing the sirens right about now. Who knows? Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. I ride to Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know, have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Sigh, fine. Up those stairs and to the left, can't miss him. You like that voice I gave him? I head up the stairs and walk around. I'm unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low rent Ger Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Mm -hmm. Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Sorry, Mr. V Fine, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Wow! Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare him in as he walks away. We're not cool. Oh. You must be huge. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Hmm. All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the 
narrator and J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye. I hated that book. Hmm. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does this thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Mm -hmm. The whole class erupts in laughter. Oh. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Perhaps, please sit down. Ah. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Huh? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm? Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Uh, Please, call me Hugo. Uh, I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student. I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? <sighs> Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to the senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Eh. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Um... Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town. Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Uh. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance. She keeps heading down this road. Mm. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on a scholarship money that she cleverly deserves. Clearly, not cleverly, clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Any sign? On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Mm -hmm. Yeah? They ever catch that right? <laughs> yes. Nice. I leave the classroom and make my way out of school. I'm so a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must have been done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Oh. All right, guys. Well, that is about all the time I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Dream Daddy. So far, I'm having so much fun recording uh, this game. And I just, the, the, the content in this game is just absolutely hysterical. And I can't get over it. But thanks so much for watching, guys. You guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. What? <laughs>